And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of Drink with Rick on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to open a bottle of the Monferrato Dolcetto. And um, this should be uh, this should be very interesting. I have never tried this before. I picked this up, of course, at uh, the local wine stream, where uh, I usually pick up a lot of my my wine, some of the better wines. I've I've, I've had some really good picks there, and tonight we're going to open this up and and try it out for the first time. I have not, unlike some of the other wines that I've picked up from the wine stream uh, or from uh, uh, wine store. Uh, I have never tasted this wine before. I did not. They did not do a tasting or anything. It was just one I happened to see on the shelf, and I asked uh, Trish and the, and the ladies about it, and they said, uh, "Yeah, it's actually a very good Italian wine." So I thought I would try it. Now, <clears throat> normally what I do is I I'll pick a bottle of wine that that they're usually trying out, but some of the wines I know are the between the fifteen and, and thirty dollar range. But I wanted to try a wine that was like under that, just like our first wine stream, where I, where we had a wine that was about a ten dollar wine, which is pretty much in everybody's price point for the most part, unless you're you you prefer a two buck chuck or or uh, uh, something like that. But for the most part, uh, nine ten dollars a bottle, and that's about what this goes for. And I thought, you know, I think I'd want to try something that's a little bit in my price point too, most of the time, because. Uh, I can't always afford to just go out and buy thirty dollar uh, wines. I, I just can't, and uh, it's it's just not it's just not healthy for my for my bank account. <laughs> yeah, I'll say that much. So, and I I've, I've had a lot of the two buck chuck in my day for that reason. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to keep it down a little bit so everyone can have a chance to try this out and enjoy it wherever it's available. We're going to go over that. We're going to, to talk about this wine a little bit. I'm going to give you a rundown of it. Um, a couple of things. First, uh, you can watch us in the live stream. Join us in the chat. Chi's in the chat. Hi, Chi, my beautiful wife there. And, uh, and drink with me. And as long as you're not in a vehicle or in a moving vehicle, uh, uh, listening to this, going down the road or anything like this, um, you know, as long as you're in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your, your hotel room, whatever, you can sit back and relax and, uh, and drink with Rick. That's much, much safer than doing it, uh, you know, some, somewhere out in a bar or out on the road where you're going to be driving later. Um, that's really not what this wine stream is about. Actually, what this wine stream is about is about trying new wines and drinking together and getting to know each other better and, and just having a good time. Uh, being with friends, that's why we're on Facebook and uh, with my friends on Facebook to have a chance to, to uh, connect with all my friends and to catch up with them. And also, we're on YouTube. Uh, now, our uh, Facebook live chat is open, so you can join us in the chat. And don't be afraid to speak up and say hi. Uh, tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're not drinking. Uh, let me see who is in, uh, who's in the, if there is anybody in the YouTube chat, because we're on YouTube as well. It uh, doesn't look like we have, I don't usually expect too many people in the chat on YouTube ever. Uh, I do know that we get people watching, but uh, they just usually are, are not uh, chatting uh, on Facebook, uh, excuse me, on YouTube. Uh, that's usually more of a, of a passive um, uh, viewing. But that's okay. That's okay. No problem there. Uh, if, you, if, you prefer just, if you prefer to just watch and, and, and drink along with me, that's just fine. And if you're watching this later, that's fine too. That's fine, too. Uh, also, you can catch us on drinkwithrick.com. Drinkwithrick.com is my website. I'm also streaming live there. And you can go to uh, drinkwithrick.com and catch the live stream or the wine stream live. The live stream live. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, I've, I've, I'm not doing this on Twitter just yet. Uh, we, uh, we are streaming, actually, to... Um, out to that um, 
uh, sort of thing, but it, it's not being picked up by Twitter yet because I haven't really set that all that up. But we, uh, and I'm, so I'm, I'm actually streaming to Periscope, but it, it's I don't know if you can really pick it up on, on Periscope per se because I, I really don't have connected to Twitter right now. But uh, one of these days, hopefully, we'll get that done. Just so much going on. I'm trying to catch up with with editing some of the older uh, episodes of this show for the podcast and, and getting ready for some exciting things that I want to be doing uh, coming up in the future. And I hope you'll uh, join me uh, and, and participate in. So a lot of stuff going on with this. It's a work in progress, and of course, this is sort of a stream of consciousness type of show. I do have some show notes, but uh, most of this is just pretty much stream of consciousness kind of thing. I do a lot of toasting because that's what this is all about as well, toasting my friends, toasting uh, birthdays, anniversaries. We'll be doing a lot of that stuff. Plus, I will be testing out... I know I've talked about the Veneto Wine Lover set uh, in the past before a few times, and we've used one or two pieces of it for the wine, but we're going to test out something a little bit different tonight. Uh, this wine actually uh, is best chilled between 60 and 64 degrees. We're going to test that out tonight. I have a wine chiller that's part of this set that I decided to finally test it out and see how it works or if it works at all we're going to find we're going to find out so uh let's talk about the wine a little bit and uh and d's join us it's great to see you uh, in the chat d don't be afraid tell me what you're drinking uh you drink along with me or if you're not drinking anything that's just fine just join us and uh and and just say hi let me know uh how you're doing and well let's let's talk about this wine for a minute i've got this is what it is. This is the Monferrato Dolcetto, and this is an Italian wine. And, and watch me. Now, I, I butchered the French language many, many times in the past. Let me go ahead and try this with it. And yes, I am of Italian descent, but I don't speak Italian. Um, if my sister Gina was in here, she would be having a laugh fest right now uh, because uh, I, I'm, I'm really terrible at this. Uh, but this is a 2017 Capitano del Palio. And the, the whole thing, if, I don't know if you can see the label up close there, but it's, I'm not even going to try to read that. It is in Italian. Okay. Uh, this, is, uh, bottle, this is produced by Cantine Povero, and that's in Italy. It is, uh, uh, this is a genuine Italian wine, as you can see from the dock stamp up there. Uh, it is an Italian wine. This is a uh, red wine that um, that's uh, the grape variety is a Dolcetto grape. That's hence uh, Dolcetto. And uh, well, we're going to talk about this a little bit more as we go along. And we're going to open it up. I can I can hardly wait to test this one to taste this wine out. Let me get a shot of the back of this wine. This is. Uh, so we can get a shot of that there. There we go. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll read what I can. Uh, Monferrato Dolcetto 2017 Capitano del pa uh, Palio. This is uh, bottled uh, by Cantin Povero in Italy. It's imported by Volio Vino in Denver, Colorado. And this is 13% alcohol by volume. Now, in, in this 750 uh, milliliter bottle. Now, the, the interesting thing, thing about this is I've looked it up online, and online there's a little discrepancy. It says 12.5% by volume, and it says 13% by volume on the label. But um, the discrepancy is and that's really really minor because as I have been told uh, before and many times in the past that that um, and I've also passed along here in the wine stream that just because it says 13% uh, alcohol by volume doesn't necessarily mean it is 13% alcohol by volume straight across the board it could be as the bottle as the wine ages as it sits in the bottle for a while uh, it can become considerably higher than that. 
this is not necessarily very accurate. This, I believe this is what they measure alcohol at the time that they bottle it. And of course, as it sits in the bottle, uh, then it's, um, and it, it ages a little more, it's, it's uh, uh, supposedly the, the alcohol content goes up a little bit. Like I said, this is just what I've been told. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to learn more about this, though. I, I am curious to know more about this. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and open this bottle of wine. We're going to taste, uh, we're going to test it out and taste it. And uh, oh, yeah, there's one other thing. To go along with it, we're going to see what it pairs with as well. To find out what it pairs with, I have tonight, uh, let me get a close up of, of this. I have tonight a, um, this, uh, I've got a steak, nice steak here. This is, um, it's not prime rib, it's, it's a, uh, forgive me, Chief, what do we have here? <laughs> I had it for dinner and I can't even remember. I also have some uh, turkey pepperoni and some crackers to clear the palate, and also some cheese. I have a little bit of, of uh, Monterey Jack cheese there. And uh, this uh, is a, um, this is gonna be really, really nice to, to taste out, to test with this wine, see how it pairs, or if it pairs up with this as well. I have a pretty good idea that this is probably pairing better with pasta, and I don't have any pasta tonight, but I don't like to drink without uh, eating something. And of course, I have my, a uh, trusty bottle of water here off camera. Let's go ahead and open this. And to open it, I have, in fact, I actually, no, I didn't. It's right here. Um, thought I'd put it away, but it's right here. This is my cutter. And we're going to open this bottle of wine with my trusty cutter. There we go. And I have my, I love this thing. This is, um, she picked it up for me at a, an estate sale for $5, but I know it costs a lot more than that. It's my bottle opener, my cork screw bottle opener thing. And uh, I've never seen this before. It's, it's a lot of fun. And we'll pull the cork open. Oh, that's a healthy pop. And let's get the cork screw. Let me move this out of the way so I don't dump anything here. And there we go. Got the cork screw out. I mean, we've got the cork out, excuse me, or the corkscrew. And we're going to let this wine breathe a little bit. And to help it breathe, I have my, uh, my Veneto. This is from the Wine Lover set that I mentioned earlier. This is the Veneto. Uh, uh, basically, it's an aerator. It's a, it's a wine aerator. And we'll just pop it in here like this. Works really, really well. And... Now we're going to try, I'm not going to put it in here too tight because I'm going to be able to get it out because we're going to try something else out here in a little bit. There we go. And we're going to pour it into my Cooper's Hawk Genuine Crystal Glass from Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pour it and we'll see how it pours. We'll just pour a little bit in the glass. Give it a little tasting first, and give it a good swirl. Swirl around. I got to be careful. I don't want to swirl it on the keyboard. And we'll we'll give it a good swirl. And I can I can get the aroma from here. I don't even have to stick my nose in the glass. I can actually see if it has any legs. See if it has any tears. The tears are developing now. This is at room temperature. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, this is a room temperature, and that's so I can see if it has some legs. And it does. It has a few. It's, it's actually, um, actually not bad. It's okay. Let me give it, give it a whiff. Hmm. Kind of a fruity smelling wine. And I smell, of course, I smell some cherry. Hmm. Kind of, um, kind of flowery, and I, I smell, I smell a hint of violet. Give it a good tasting here.
Okay, now that's interesting. That is interesting. Let me give this another taste. Hmm. Definitely taste berries. A couple, a couple of different berries in this. But it's it's very smooth, very smooth. I would say it has. It's it's very um, very smooth to taste. It has some tannins, a few tannins. It's not bad. It's 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 actually not very tannic. It's slightly tannic, I would say. It's it's a little tannic, but not bad. I feel some of more toward my throat than anything else. Very. Oh, wow, very fruity. It's it's um, it's a dry. It's a nice dry wine. It's not overly dry. It's not too dry that 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 you would wind up having to. You know, it's not too tannic to so wind up having to dry out your mouth in a way. But it's 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 very it's very pleasantly dry, and boy, it goes down very smooth. For a ten dollar wine, I'm I'm actually um, I'm actually kind of impressed. I wasn't expecting, I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect from this. I really didn't. But this is actually, uh, actually a nice, now I have to say that, that the, at uh, the, the very, very end, very end, some of the fruits come out a little bit, a little bit more. And, um, uh, say, well, I want to say it's, it's, it's really interesting. It's a very, what's the word they use? Velvety? I think so. This kind of has a very velvety texture to it. Yeah. I like that. Well, it's, it's very good. I'm going to have a little bit more of this. But you know, before I have too much more of it, uh, let's, let me see if, uh, if we have anyone else in the chat. Let's see cheese there, D's there. Uh, anyone else in the chat on, on um, YouTube? I still check YouTube just to make sure, just in case. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, it looks like we have a couple of people in the fan chat, and it looks like it's uh, looks like it's kind of a quiet night tonight. But I tell you what, it's a nice quiet night for for uh, for a good wine. And I, I'm, let me open this up here a little bit. There we go. We're going to test something else out here with this wine in just a few minutes, but uh, I will I will say this actually is is very nice. I think it does well on its own. Now, according to what I've I've picked up online about this wine, I believe it's supposed to uh, go. Well, let me get another shot of the of the uh, bottle here for for just a minute. This is uh, that's the back of the bottle, and. Well, let's see if I can get the front back up here. There we go. Um, you know, it's 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 actually a nice looking bottle for ten dollars. It, it looks like a more expensive wine than it is. And uh, everywhere I've checked online, I've looked around online. Everywhere else I've checked, it it goes for about ten dollars. I think I picked this one up at wine store for, I want to say it was eight ninety nine, eight ninety nine, nine ninety nine. Uh, something like that, but I uh, supposedly this is supposed to pair well with uh, some fresh cheese, um, a pasta, uh, you know, white meat. I have a list of things here that I looked up online that was supposed to pair well with uh, pasta with tomato sauce, uh, fresh vegetables, things like that. But uh, I'll be honest. I, I really don't, I'm not really 100% sure that this one is a a real white meat wine. I, I, I'd say maybe with a, a with a turkey or something, maybe it might be okay. But I, I'm going to try out the fresh cheese bit. 
I it, so it supposedly it doesn't it's not really meant for really red meats and um, I'm going to try it with with this and see what happens just because I want to finish eating this this was part of my dinner mm. and this was a it was a filet mignon that's what it was right chief this was a filet mignon and it tastes every bit like it mm. Hmm. So let me see how this works. Yeah, I would say I would say this is probably not a filet mignon wine. Um, it's 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 not too bad. I mean, if, but it, this would not be my choice as a filet mignon wine. So. I would say that, uh, yeah, don't don't really pair this with a fillet. It, it it probably does go better with maybe some white meat. Let's try it with, in pasta, definitely. Let's try it with cheese. And I have the Monterey Jack here. About as fresh cheese I could find. Works much better with the cheese. It does work much better with the cheese. I'm gonna have some more of this. Yeah, I think so. Let's. Uh, I'm not even gonna bother with the turkey pepperoni. I, I don't think this is really a, a steak in, in red meat wine. Well, actually, turkey is a, a white meat, but it's uh, this is the uh, this is pepperoni. You know, it's it's more of a spicier meat. I I don't think that would work well. I'm gonna have a little bit of cracker here. Clear my palate a bit. That's great filet mignon though. She did an awesome job with that. She really did. She 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 did that upright. Um, let's see. Let me a little water here to clear the palate. Okay. All right. I think we're back uh, even keel here so I, I think given that I think it's really yeah it's probably probably is a white meat kind of wine uh, chicken turkey maybe um, not not really for red meats I would say um, it works okay with the cheese but uh, pasta I think it would probably it probably uh, pair up pretty well with pasta um, I'd say pasta, if, if you have a good tomato sauce, and maybe uh, it might be okay with a little bit of, of meat in there, if it's mixed in. And the pasta meat with, with uh, maybe a chicken parmesan or something like that would probably be fine with. Probably be good with a chicken parmesan. Uh, meatballs, I don't know. Spaghetti meatballs, I, mm, I don't know. But a, a, a chicken parmesan I think would be fine with. Yeah, I think it'd be good with that. I don't have any here to try it out, but I, I, I'm just guessing it's probably all right with that. I have um, another item here I want to test before it gets too warm because I've had it in the freezer for about two hours, and hopefully it'll, it'll sit for for a little bit while uh, longer before we try it out. But before we get to that, I want to get, I want to start toasting some anniversaries and birthdays, and actually mostly birthdays, because I, I couldn't really find a good anniversary. So it was someone who had a work anniversary, and uh, uh, I'm not sure if that, uh, I think that was last week. But uh, birthdays, first of all, I want to toast my friend Nancy, who, um, and, uh, and from Daytona, who, um, a childhood friend of ours, of uh, mine and my sisters, my families, and her, her family, we were childhood friends. And I want to toast her because she just had her birthday this past week. So Nancy, if you're watching now or later, happy belated birthday now. It was uh, earlier this week. And if you haven't noticed, I like toasting birthdays and, and anniversaries and things because that's what that's that's what you do with a good wine, right? 
you can have a little bit more of that. Also, um, birthday's coming up. My, my niece, Julia. My niece, Julia, is having her birthday. I believe it's tomorrow, right? So, Julia, if you're watching, or Gina, if you're, if you're watching, um, my uh, sister Gina's daughter, uh, if, if, uh, if, if Gina's watching, or Julia, happy birthday to Julia. And that's for you. And I know you're quite, not quite a drinking age yet, but you can still, uh, you can still get a birthday greeting from me. <laughs> you don't have to be of, of drinking age to be toasted. That's for sure. We can toast anything here on the wine stream. Anything that's worth toasting, right? Uh, another birthday, we have uh, Joanne. Joanne, uh, who was uh, uh, my, uh, my sister-in-law. She will always be my sister-in-law. Um, and I want to say she's having her birthday coming up, I think, on the 30th. So I want to say happy birthday, Joanne. I hope you're doing well. Hope the family's doing well. And it is an honor to be able to toast you as well. Um, the honor is all mine for all of you having birthdays because I am enjoying toasting your birthdays. And uh, it's a great way to remember a birthday, right? <laughs> Wine? It is. And it's a good way, a, a day to, it's a good way to share a birthday with with people that you care about your friends family neighbors um, relatives uh, people that you love and uh, I, I, I I really um, I really appreciate you I really appreciate all of you let's see I don't have any other anniversaries however we have some I, I said you know what we should toast some national days some national uh, days I'm always hearing about national days and I'm not talking about just holidays but you know like national donut day national uh, I don't know kiss a, a, a frog day or whatever if there is such a thing I don't know if there's a kiss a frog day <laughs> I'm not celebrating that one but um, th there are a lot of really, really interesting days. Like we had less this past week. We had a national, um, what was it, uh, elevator day, something like that. National ride in elevator day or something like that. Yeah, it was that was interesting. Uh, but July, I, I, I looked it up, and there's so many national holidays. Actually, I went to nationalholidaycalendar.com, and there are a lot of them out there. And I found some that were coming up. Some from today which is almost not today anymore, it's, it's almost going to be yesterday, but July 27th, let's see, National Love is Kind Day, that's one I can get behind, so we'll, we'll, we'll toast that. National Scotch Day, now of course I'm not drinking scotch, and I think that's the scotch they're referring to, not scots, uh, not the scots, from Scotland, but uh, National Scotch Day. So I could toast the Scots in Scotland too, but uh, National Scotch Day, we'll toast to that. I'll drink to that. This is starting to get taste a little bit better as I go down. It's, it's a little different though, because I'm starting to taste a couple of notes of something else. It's very flowery though, kind of perfumey. National Creme Brulee Day. Now, I like creme brulee, but I can't really eat it much anymore because I'm supposed to stay off the sugary stuff. Well, look at me drinking wine. You know that wine converts to sugar, right? So, uh, there you go. <laughs> trying to stay off, I'm trying to stay off the processed sugars. I, let me put it that way. Processed foods, the processed sugars, because that stuff is very, very bad for you. National Creme Brulee Day. I can get behind that. I can drink to that. Then we have National National New Jersey Day. National New Jersey Day. I've been in New Jersey. I have relatives from New Jersey. I've had to drive through New Jersey a number of times. I had to go to New Jersey a couple of times. 
not my favorite state. I'm, I'm sorry, and nothing against people from New Jersey, but I tell you, that state's, uh, I don't know, that's that state's something else. It's, uh, no, I can't toast National New Jersey Day. I'm sorry. That's the it's gonna be one day I don't. That's gonna be the one thing I don't toast is National New Jersey Day. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Nothing personal against people from New Jersey, but I just can't toast a day for New Jersey. If they give me a National Florida Day, I'll toast that because that's where I'm from. And you can't hate Florida, really. Except maybe if you're down there right now in the sweltering heat in the middle of summer, I guess it's not uh, not really a, a lot of fun. But um, I, I still I still have a love for Florida. Let's see if there's a National Florida Day. I don't see one coming up. National Day of the Cowboy. That's the fourth Saturday in July, which would be today. National Day of the Cowboy. Okay, I can get behind that. National Day because the cowboy is what brings us. Brings us the beef to market, and um, I love beef. Sorry to the pita folks, but I I, I love beef, so I'll drink the national uh, national day of the cowboy. We have some uh, we have some coming up here. We'll get back to that. We'll do some more toasting a little bit first. Let's see who else is in the chat. Let's see what else is going on. In fact, let me take a break and go ahead to the to the um, try this thing before it gets too warm here. But what I have, and we're going to take this off for just a minute, the the uh, aerator, because we're going to try something a little bit different. And you know what? Maybe I drank too much of this bottle to really for it to really work well. But what I have here is part of the Veneto wine lover set, uh, and I've been promising I was going to try this out. Let me get a closer shot of this. Um, there we go. I have, this is the uh, wine uh, chiller portion of the set. And it's in two pieces. I sort of had to figure this out for myself because there weren't any instructions that came with this. But you put this piece on here. And basically there's a, there's a chiller liquid in there. And you're supposed to put it in the freezer for about an hour. So it's nice and chilled. And then what you do is you take these two pieces and then you, you're supposed to, to take out a little bit of, uh, I guess, a half a glass of, of, of um, a wine out of the bottle uh, so that it compensates for the liquid displacement because when you put this in the bottle, it's going to displace the liquid and you don't want it running over the bottle. But then what you do is you put it in the bottle like this and there's still enough liquid in there for it to go, yeah, it goes pretty far down in there. I don't know if you can see this, but it's it's pretty far down in the bottle. And you make sure it's in there really good. And I guess it has a built-in aerator in there of sorts. Make sure it's in there nice and tight. And then you pour out... Let me get rid of this first. Okay. So then you pour it in... You put it in the bottle... And it's supposed to chill the wine down, and it's supposed to chill it down as you pour it into the glass. And let's see if this works. I have never tried this before. We'll see if it works. Now, the reason we're trying it on this wine is because this wine in particular, this Monferrato Dolcetto, is supposed to be chilled down to about 16 to 18 degrees centigrade, which comes out to about 60 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's supposed to be chilled a little bit. I did not put it in my new wine cooler. I'm going to see if it's a little bit chilled. Now, of course, I left this out. I, I didn't put it in right away. I have this. Uh, you're supposed to put it in the freezer for an hour. The uh, the little wine chiller in the freezer for an hour, and let it uh, freeze. I had it in there for about two hours before I froze it, or, you know, to freeze it, and before I took it out, and uh, supposedly it should be fine, but it sat out here for half an hour because we, I've been yakking for actually 40 minutes almost before I put it in there, so it's had plenty of time to warm back up.
Now it doesn't ta it tastes it 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 feels just a little bit cooler. It's just it it is a little bit below room temperature. It's not chilled too much, but it's a little bit below room temperature. And I would say it probably would be uh, room temperature here is about uh, seventy degrees. Up here maybe a little bit hotter because of the studio lights on. It's about 72, 74 degrees, and um, it does feel like it's about eight. I wouldn't. I don't know if it's about ten degrees cooler. But it feels like it's about eight degrees cooler. I'm just guessing, of course, because I am not a human thermometer. But it does. It does feel a little cooler when I drink it. It's slightly cooler. So I would say that. Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna leave it in there for the bottle in the bottle for a few minutes because it doesn't say that you have to. I'm looking at the wine chiller instructions on the box because I have the box right here. And it, according to the wine chiller instructions, it says uh, store chill rod in freezer for about an hour. Check. Did that for two hours. Attach frozen chill rod to pourer. Did that. Pour a half a glass of wine out of bottle to allow pourer to be inserted. Uh, yeah, I definitely did that. Uh, insert wine chiller into bottle and make sure it sits snug in bottle's neck. I definitely did that. And then Veneto Wine Chiller keeps chilled wine cold and cools down wine to ideal drinking temperature. And uh, step six, enjoy wine at its perfection from your first to your very last glass. That's what it says here. Now, <clears throat> I did pour it right after I put it in the bottle. And to be fair, we're down to almost half the bottle. So this thing goes down to, let me see how far it goes down. It goes down, it's hard to tell, but it looks like it goes down about two thirds of the way into the bottle. So it really hasn't had a chance to really chill the wine because I had already taken about a quarter of the bottle down before I even put this thing in, or actually about a third. I put it, I, I, I probably drank a third of the bottle before I actually put this in. So to be fair, that 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 really wasn't, uh, uh, you know, because it really needs to to sit in the entire bottle of wine to to really chill it. But it, it does taste a little cool. It is a little cooler. Feels a little cooler. I think it does work. I, I really think it does work. We need to try it. I guess what I need to do is I need to follow this to the letter next time and open a bottle of wine and try it again when it's just just a half a glass of wine. I, what I'll do is I'll just do the initial tasting and then, which is what I intended to do tonight, was just do the initial bit to taste the wine and then put the uh, chiller in there. And I really didn't do that. I, I, I went farther down in the bottle than I really was supposed to before I put the chiller in. So, uh, okay, so I kind of screwed that up, but um, it does taste, it does feel a little bit cooler. And as we'll let it sit in the bottle for a while. We'll let it sit in the bottle for a while and see if it gets, and then we'll try it again and see if it gets even cooler. So uh, we'll talk about other stuff, then we'll try it again and uh, see how it works. In the meantime, let's get back to the national days because this is kind of fun. Uh, I like toasting uh, days. Let's see. I like toasting things. I, I like uh, an excuse to toast something, to drink something. July 28th, coming up, that's tomorrow, is National Milk Chocolate Day. Okay, that, that sounds like fun. I l used to love uh, chocolate milk, you know, and, and, and when I was in school, when I was in high school, as a matter of fact, I used to buy a chocolate milk, you know, with my, my, my lunch. Oh. That's one reason why I, my, my, my diet was so terrible. I mean, my, I'd, I'd go to school and I'd buy the, the little pizzas and then have it with a chocolate milk. And then for, for uh, dessert, I'd, ha I'd have a, uh, an ice cream sandwich or an ice cream bar. That was my lunch almost every day at school. Every, almost every day. <laughs> and... Uh, I guess that, that uh, that's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, maybe, that, that's, maybe that's my problem. <laughs> but uh, I, I, that was my diet pretty much at school. You know, on days that I didn't take my, my lunch to school, and, and there were quite a few days when I didn't. 
just because I liked the pizza and I liked the chocolate milk and I really liked the ice cream sandwich. Of course, back then it was a lot cheaper. Um, I think the, I don't remember what, what the pizza cost, uh, but I remember the, the um, ice cream sandwich. I could buy an ice cream sandwich for 10 cents, which was pretty cool. Well, maybe that was 15 cents. I think the, the ice cream bar was 10 cents. And then the ice cream sandwich was like 15. In any case, it was definitely, an, and I knew that was a deal back then. It was a, you know, I mean, what was it, back in the 70s? Okay, everything was cheaper back in the 70s, but even then I knew that was kind of a deal. So I took advantage of it every ch chance I got. Uh, I told you this is a stream of consciousness show. <laughs> I'm rambling on. I'm, I'm going off on tangents, but that's what I do here on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. Uh, let's see. July 28th, National Parents Day. Okay, if my kids are watching, Tia and Tommy, uh, tomorrow is National Parents Day. Just to let you know, and we're not expecting anything special, uh, but, uh, you know, just to let you know, Tomorrow is National Parents Day. So here's, the, I will definitely drink to that. If you're a parent, or you've been a parent, or you're soon to be a parent, I'm going to drink to you. That was worth two. One for each parent. Okay. Um, July, yes, there are, I know there are families with one parent families, but you know what? It takes two to make a kid. Um, unless it's, well, we're not even going to go there. Okay. But, but right now it, 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 um, last I checked, it still basically takes two to make a kid. Um, we're going to try this again, see if it's any cooler than before. It's a little cooler. I wouldn't say it's 10 degrees cooler uh, per se, but it's, 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 it's cooler. Definitely. All right, what we have coming up July 29th, National Lasagna Day. Now, I can definitely get behind that. I can, I can definitely toast National Lasagna Day. I love lasagna. I love a good lasagna. Now, I've had some bad lasagna. I've made some bad lasagna. But I've also made some pretty good lasagna because I used to make lasagna quite a bit. Now, and, and I taught she how to make lasagna, and then she took the ball and ran with it, literally. She made the last time, as a matter of fact, I think we had it on the wine stream. I had some on the wine stream. It was uh, two or three weeks ago. She made a lasagna, and I, she she's really experimented with the lasagna, and there were some that turned out great, some that were yeah, not so great, but... The one that she made a few weeks ago that I tried out on the wine stream a few weeks ago was just uh, just great. I mean, it was just awesome. And I tried that with the wine. I can't remember which wine that I paired that with. I think it was, uh, I want to say it was uh, the Domaine de Genasse or the, uh, what was it, the uh, Massim, uh, the, that one right there. The uh, one of the two wines, and it was uh, just it, it really brought out the lasagna, the flavor of the lasagna. I was really impressed with that. I really liked it. She did a fabulous job with that lasagna, and um, I hope she makes it again sometime soon because I love lasagna. And here's to National Lasagna Day. Maybe, maybe because tomorrow's National Lasagna Day. Maybe, maybe she'll make it. She's, if she's still uh, watching, because I know she, she may have fallen asleep by now, but because uh, I've bored her to death. But, uh, gee, if you're still watching, tomorrow is National Lasagna Day. Hint, hint. Here's to National Lasagna Day. What else do we have coming up here? Let's see. National Father-in-Law Day. Okay, I'm going to skip that one. National Whistleblower Day. National, uh, nothing, nothing against my father-in-law, but it, actually, you know, I never knew my father-in-law, to be honest, because my, 
my uh, my father-in-law uh you know passed passed away long before uh i met my wife but i'll, I'll toast him i will toast uh, him I, because uh, i i've always kind of wanted a father-in-law and it's um uh, i'll toast him national whistleblower day you know, there's an, and I don't want to get political at all or anything like that, but, but look, the whole whistleblower thing, I would say is overblown. And I'll tell you why, because here is supposed to be, we're supposed to have laws about, uh, about protection uh, for whistleblowers and things like that, but there have been, but it seems like nothing has changed in that respect, because you hear stories all the time about people who are, who were whistleblowers who made that who made that uh, took that risk and uh, where are they now well a lot of them still didn't fare very well even though there's a law passed supposedly about uh, uh, you know um, uh, whistleblowers and not retaliating against whistleblowers that hasn't changed anything in my opinion in my personal opinion I don't think that's changed anything now when I say whistleblowers, it can be whistleblowers anywhere. It can be whistleblowers, uh, in, in, say, in, uh, you know, in the government. It could be whistleblowers in your job. It can be whistleblowers in your school. It could be whistleblowers um, in pretty much anywhere. And, and it, it seems that that, um, that has, the, the people who, who make that, uh, I don't want to say sacrifice, so take that risk. When they see something that's wrong, that they know is wrong, that's morally or ethically wrong, and they try to, and sometimes for safety reasons that they know is wrong, and they uh, are whistleblowers, that they, they, um, they try to alert uh, the authorities or they try to alert the powers that be, the people in charge that can do something to fix it, and uh, occasionally it's, it's pe the people that are in those positions to do something to fix it are, are, are actually the ones that are causing the problems to begin with, and that makes it worse. Uh, it seems to me the whistleblowers are basically screwed uh, in most cases, even though there's supposed to be laws to protect them now, supposedly. Um, it, it doesn't seem to have changed anything, really. Uh, they, they still get uh, they still get penalized in, in, in one way or another. So uh, I will, you know I'd like to say that for people who are whistleblowers that do it for the right reasons, do it for the right reasons, who do it uh, because they see something uh, something wrong and something that, that needs to be fixed. Um, I would say definitely here's to you. I definitely want to toast you because um, now there are certain cases where there are quote whistleblowers that uh, really aren't uh, really doing anybody justice. But in most case, in a lot of cases, people that are trying to to alert someone else to to a problem. I think that, uh, and, and uh, I think they're taking a risk. They are definitely risk takers. And I want to say, um, I, I want to say here's to you, because that, that is a risk that, uh, that can really affect your lives, your family's lives, your, the, 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 your, your, your jobs, your reputations. Here's to you. What else do we have here? Something a little bit happier. Okay, July 31st. Um, July 31st is National Avocado Day. And I'll drink to that. I love avocados. I love avocados. Love it. You know, actually, I, let, me, let me backtrack a little bit. I love avocados if they're guacamole okay they're the avocados by themselves i'm not too crazy about i'm not a fan of avocados per se it's kind of like eating eggplant i don't know who eats it well okay i know who eats eggplant 
But uh, I know a couple of people who eat eggplant that love eggplant. I do not like eggplant. In fact, when I was a kid, my mom, my mom and my dad used to make eggplant. And they used to bread it. They used to slice it up and bread it and fry it. And it was always gross to me. I, I'm sorry, but they, they would take slices of eggplant they, in, in, these, in these, uh, these little patties, and they bread it, and then they fry it, fried eggplant. And I thought it was just... Yeah, it, 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 first of all, eggplant, to me, if I'm eating it, you know, like, just plain, it's just, I don't know, it's just slimy, and I, I don't like it. I can't, I can't deal with it. can't deal with eggplant. Um, hate eggplant. But um, the, the fried eggplant was just not much better. It was, it was just, it was eggplant that was just fried, <laughs> you know. That just didn't change my my dislike of eggplant just because it was fried. I love fried foods, but you, you, it, it's like putting a lipstick on a pig, you know? It's like it's still a pig. Uh, fried eggplant. So, um, I, I, I never cared much for eggplant. But avocados, to me, if I ate an avocado by itself, it was kind of almost like in a way, the same sort of thing as eating eggplant. It was kind of soft and yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to. I wouldn't. I don't want to. Kind of slimy. I don't know. I, I don't know. Just. Uh, but. In an, but when you put it, when you make guacamole with it, you mix it with all the stuff and make guacamole. It completely changes. The, the the avocado I mean in a way and it, it's 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 it transforms it into something almost a work of art I mean you're talking about guacamole that's almost uh, that's you're mixing it with what lime and 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 and, uh, to, and some people make it with tomatoes and 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 whatever else they put in there and when you make you know she makes guacamole now she makes it really really chunky she likes her guacamole chunky. I'm not crazy about chunking. I'll eat it because it's it's because I, I, I love guacamole. But she'll um, but but I prefer I prefer it you know more more smooth more more <laughs> more unchunked. <laughs> she likes it really chunky. I don't like it chunky. It's kind of like peanut butter. It's like some people love peanut butter when it's chunky. Some people love it smooth. I was never a fan of chunky peanut butter. I love, I like smooth peanut butter. I like it smooth. I do not like chunky peanut butter. But some people love it chunky. It's the same thing with guacamole. Um, to me, guacamole needs to be really, I don't know, guacky. <laughs> That's not a word. But it, it needs to be like just a little more minced up, you know. So you can really, the thing is with with chunky guacamole. You dip into it with a chip or something, and you can break the chip because it comes up in these big chunks. If it's if it's a lot more, if it's a lot smoother, for lack of a better word, chunky and smooth like peanut butter. But it's a little smoother. You can dip. You can easily dip into it, and and get a hunk of guacamole uh, on your chip, and not worry about big hunks of it falling off or, or getting on your shirt or whatever, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just, it just seems more elegant that way, you know, just with a, with a guacamole, with smooth uh, guacamole, and, and I love guacamole, I really do, and, and she makes a really great guacamole, it's just not, I just would wish it were not so chunky, but that's the way she prefers it, so that's how she makes it. But uh, where was it going with that? I don't know. I need some more wine. <laughs> anyway, the uh, the guacamole. If if the avocado is guacamole, I love it. If the avocado is just avocado, like chunks of avocado on a in a salad or something, I can't. I can't really get by. I can't really eat it. I can't. It has to be guacamole before I eat it. But I love it when it's guacamole. 
I really do. What and and I think uh, let's see what else do we have here. July thirty first, National Raspberry Cake Day. Okay, you know I forgot to to toast guacamole. I'm not toasting National Avocado Day. I'm toasting National Avocado Day as guacamole. What they should have is a National Guacamole Day. National Raspberry Cake Day. Okay, I can do that. Uh, raspberries, I, I like cherries, which is one reason why I like a lot of these wines, because they a lot of them have a cherry flavor to them, and I love cherries. One of my favorite um, one of my favorite fruits are cherries. And as a matter of fact, she brought home a bag of cherries today, and uh, I washed them, and I was just eating through those things. I had to stop eating them because I was just kind of going through too many of them. You don't want to eat too many of them, but... Cherries, I love cherries. Uh, it's it's one of my favorite fruits. It's one of my favorite flavors. It's cherry. Uh, National Raspberry Cake Day. Now, raspberry is a little bit different from, from cherries. I like raspberry, too. Not as much as cherry. I think raspberry is a little tartar than cherry, in my opinion. But I, I still like raspberry. And uh, actually, I, I, what I, if, I would do, if I would put a graph between my three favorite or my four favorite berries, I would put cherries first, then blueberries, then uh, I would say blackberries, because I love blackberries, but can't eat them so much anymore, and then raspberries. The, those are real. And there are other berries on there, too, that I can get behind. But um, the, my, my favorite berries are, are in that order. But National Raspberry Day, Cake Day, I have never, I've never had a raspberry cake. Never. But I would love to try one. I would love to try a raspberry cake. Is there really any such a thing as raspberry cake? Is there really? I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know. Is, is there really, anybody in the chat, is there really a raspberry cake? I, I never heard of raspberry cake. I've heard of, I, I, you know, Cherry cakes. I've heard of uh, strawberry cakes. I've heard of uh, a lot of different different kinds of cakes, but I've never heard of a raspberry cake. Um, I would love to try one. I really would. That would be awesome. Um, I'd be willing to try that out. So, uh, raspberry cake. Okay. Well, I'll, you know, I'll I'll toast it. I'll drink to that. I'll, I'll toast. This is actually starting to taste a little raspberry-ish. Yeah, it's very, it's a, this is a very berry wine, but it's actually starting to taste a little bit like, I don't know, not so much raspberry, but. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. National Mutt Day. Does it have to do with dogs? Let me let me find out. National Mutt Day. I don't know. It's 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 a uh, it's a day. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, it's for for dogs. National Mutt Day. It, uh, it, it according to the website here, it encourages us to embrace, save, and celebrate mixed breed dogs twice a year on July thirty first and December second. So they get two days. National Mutt Day gets two days, July 31st and December 2nd. Oh, who gets two days? I don't know. Anyway, National Mutt Day is July 31st. So if you have a dog, and I love dogs. Dogs are great. They're, dogs are awesome. If you have a dog, National Mutt Day. If you have a purebred dog, um, you know, that still celebrate your dog. But... Uh, if your dog is uh, what they would call a mutt, and it sounds really derog, you know, mutt sounds really de derogatory to dogs, but you know, to be honest, there are a lot of what I'd call mutts, dogs that are really, really cool dogs. They're really cool dogs. Now, uh, my dog, or I should say, Tommy's dog, uh, Cosmo, he. Uh, I don't think it'd be considered a mutt. I mean, when you're saying mixed breeds, you're talking about mixed like two or three, four different breeds. You don't know what the breeds are. They're just all, a bunch of mixed breeds. It's a kind of a Heinz 57 kind of dog. 
Um, Cosmo is a cockapoo. Now, he's a mixed breed. He's a cockapoo, which is a combination of cocker spaniel and a poodle. Now, that, mix, that kind of mixed breed dog has been, they've been trying to make it a purebred for a long, long time. I think they've been, uh, I think they've been lobbying the, uh, uh, the, uh, the association that, uh, that, that takes care of the, uh, uh, the, the do national dog breeds. I can't think of it right off hand. I've had too much of this wine. <laughs> But um, the National Kennel Club, thank you. The National, thank, I don't know who I was thinking. <laughs> I just thought of it. The National Kennel Club, American Kennel Club. I'm sorry, American Kennel Club. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. American Kennel Club. American Kennel Club, the AKC, it recognizes official breeds, and there are a number of official breeds that are on there. Cockapoos are not considered an official breed. Uh, official purebred, pure breed. Um, I guess they're con still considered a mixed breed, which they are. But look, look, how many purebred dogs are actually purebred dogs? How many purebred dogs were actually, I don't know, hundreds, maybe a thousand, a couple thousand years ago were actually mixed breeds that over time became you know, the, the, their own breed, you know, right, right. Um, yeah, take take German Shepherds for instance, Collies, um, uh, dogs like that. I think Collie is a, a purebred. A, a German Shepherd is a purebred. Uh, 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 an Irish Setter, I don't know. Um, but uh, I don't even want to go there right now. I really don't. But Let's say purebred dogs. And this has been a. This has actually been a point of contention. I guess I am pouring more wine. This has been a point of contention between uh, dog lovers and the AKC for a while, as I understand, where they've been trying to get, particularly cockapoo owners, people who love cockapoos, that have been trying to uh, get the cockapoo recognized as an official breed. But the AKC still can, uh, uh, refuses to recognize cockapoos as their own breed. Now, you know, I don't want to get in the middle of that argument. To be honest, I don't care. I tell you what, I don't think the dog cares. I don't think Cosmo, if I asked Cosmo, he wouldn't care. He wouldn't know. He wouldn't understand. He would not care. But uh, for the owners of, of their beloved dogs, their beloved animals, um, for some of them it means a lot. And uh, as far as the cockapoo is concerned, it's it's a great dog. I, I love cockapoos. We, we all love cockapoos. And Cosmo is just an amazing dog. He's so smart. Uh, the dog is so smart. He's, uh, as I always say to him, he's smarter than he looks. But he seems to understand. He seems to understand a lot of what we're saying, even though, uh, you know, I mean, he's a dog, but he just, somehow he seems to instinctively understands a lot of what we're what we say when we're talking to him, and um, that uh, to me, I think that's pretty amazing. Dogs are dogs are awesome. They really are. So I'll tell you what. Uh, National Mutt Day. National Mud Day, I will definitely drink to that. Definitely. And that's our national days. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this, you know what, if there are, um, if we have some, some weeks that are kind of slow in the birthdays and the anniversaries, I think I'm going to turn to this and, and uh, t start toasting national days because there are plenty of national days I could toast. <laughs> just because I can. So anyway, uh, where were we? Anybody else in the chat? Let me check and see what's going on in YouTube. Nothing else going on in YouTube. People are there's some people watching, but uh, it looks like, but uh, just nobody's really participating. That's about the way it goes on YouTube. 
Facebook's been a little spotty tonight. I I, I noticed that the uh, a few times, and if you're bearing with us, I noticed that a few times the the um, stream has has stopped a few times, has cut out a few times. Fortunately, I'm recording this. I did remember to hit the record button. Now, last week I hit the report, record button late. I'd forgotten. I, I have notes here that says, don't forget to press record. And I forgot to press record when I started, and I'd, I'd pick it up in the middle. But today, I remember, tonight, I remember to press the record button before I started um, the show. So this is being recorded. And if we're missing something on Facebook, maybe I can upload a full version later on that everyone can watch later in the meantime uh let's continue to enjoy this moment on the wine stream i want to have another piece of this cheese because it's actually pretty good <laughs> although it's getting a little dried out because it's been sitting under the lights okay i went to the national days I want to talk about the wine lovers set for just a minute because we have been testing this out and it has chilled the wine down just a little bit. I can't say that it's it's um, chilled down a lot, but it has chilled it down somewhat. And I think this is um I think this is a keeper. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to try this again next week as well when it's not so far down in the bottle before I put the the uh, chiller in. But I do want to talk about the Wine Lover set. This is, um, for a minute, um, this is, and of course I've got most of the pieces out of here because I've used most of the pieces and I've tested them out. I took two more pieces out of this thing, but it comes with, it's like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven piece set. And there are spaces actually inside for the whole thing. Now, what I've used and what we tried so far on the wine stream is we've tried the uh, aerator, which is actually two pieces. The aerator is two pieces. It comes apart here. This is in two pieces. The aerator works very well. I really like this aerator. And actually, they sell this aerator um, separately. And I think it's like $11 separately for this, for this two-piece set, something like that. Uh, it's available at drinkwithrick.com. It, it's available from, from uh, Amazon.com. Uh, and you can, you can look it up at drinkwithrick.com and, and purchase it if you want to purchase it. It's fine. Uh, the, the wine chiller portion of it, that's also in two pieces. And I'm taking it out here. I'll take it out for a minute. It's in these two pieces. It's not as cold as it was at the very beginning, which probably accounts for something. But the bottle is a little, excuse me, the bottle is slightly cooler. And I did bring the bottle up here at wine temperature. It comes with, I have not tried this, you know, because I usually use my, my other cutter. But it does come with a, a um, with a um, wine uh, you know, a seal cutter. I don't know what they call this thing, to be honest. Uh, it comes with one of those, and we're going to try this out. Maybe next week we'll try this out and see how it works instead of the one that I traditionally use, which came with the the uh, corkscrew. And it comes with a, uh, you know, we'll have to try every one of these pieces out at some point. It comes with a stopper. This is interesting. I, I, I played around with it a little bit, and uh, it's supposed to be stopper where you put it in. The, if you haven't finished the bottle of wine, you put the stopper in and and um, sucks the air out and then really creates a seal and stops it, uh, basically. In, in, you know, traditionally what I do is I put the cork. I save the cork, and I put the cork back in the wine bottle. It, you know, for if, if I haven't finished it all, like tonight, I might. Sheesh, I've gone pretty far down this bottle. I didn't realize it. But um, if if I don't finish the bottle, I will put the cork back in the bottle, and I will put it back in the fridge, and then I'll have it. You know, maybe finish it off tomorrow, like with a Sunday night dinner or something like that. I'll I'll do that. 
so that's what happens when you, you see the wine stream. You see that I go down about halfway into the bottle. And you say, well, what does he do with the rest of the wine? That's what I do. I put the cork in it. I literally put a cork in it. Uh, yeah, I put a cork in me too, right? I put a cork in it and I put it in the fridge. Open it up on Sunday night when I'm when I'm uh, having a Sunday dinner, and uh, and and have the rest of the bottle with my Sunday dinner. Um, I have not tried this yet, but this looks like a pretty interesting piece. We we need to try this as well. Uh, I haven't. I like to rinse it off first before I use it. Uh, so I'm I'm not going to try it tonight. And then we have this. We have a corkscrew. And it is it, what it does is it has the it has the knife. It actually, it's serrated. That's interesting. My other one, which is uh, it was branded Las Vegas because uh, she picked it up when she went to Las Vegas um, a few years ago with uh, with her sister, my sister in law, for a few days, and um, she she brought me back that as a souvenir. And it's just falling apart. It's really starting to come apart. It's uh, because it's been used a lot. I've I've opened a lot of bottles of wine with it, and uh, that one just has a straight, very sharp little cutting knife. This is duller. This is not sharp. I don't think I can really cut myself on this, like this. But it's serrated. I can't get really any closer to it than that. But um, I don't know if you can see it. But it's serrated. I don't know if this will really cut anything or not, to be honest. We'll have to try. We will definitely have to try this on a wine stream, upcoming wine stream. So I'll save that piece and we'll we'll try it out. It is, uh, but it looks like a traditional, looks like a traditional corkscrew piece, like what you'd find, uh, like what a lot of garçons would would uh, have in a uh, waiters would have in a restaurant. We, they, they'd cut open the wine and then they'd open the bottle of wine for you in, in a really, really, one of the finer restaurants. A lot of the restaurants I go to, they don't open the bottle, they just hand it to you. Here's a glass of wine, here's a bottle. <laughs> uh, but it, a, a finer restaurants, when the waiter would actually open the bottle of wine for you, um, they'll use, a lot of them will use something like this. And uh, so we'll try that out and see how it works in a future wine stream. But that is pretty much the wine lovers kit. That's it's a seven piece kit, and the seven piece the seven piece kit uh, sold for nineteen ninety five, I think, on Amazon. And I do have links to this. If you want to purchase this wine, and, and, and I'm, I'm not hawking this because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not a shill for them or anything, but I do get a few cents um, because I'm, uh, you know, obviously, uh, if I have some Amazon links on there, I'm going to have a, 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 uh, an affiliate link there that uh, if you want to buy that, you can, you can purchase it right from the website at uh, drinkwithrick.com. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can just go straight to Amazon and do it. But I, I tell you what, I would really appreciate if you could because, to be honest, uh, a few cents here, a few cents there would definitely help um, forward the wine stream, help support the wine stream, would help support my wine, oops, my wine habit. I just spilled something there. Um... <laughs> It would definitely support the wine stream because it does cost me to do this. Uh, I'm doing this for fun, of course, but it does cost me to. It, it's it's not it's not free. It does it does cost me to to do this. So if uh, if you're interested in helping to support, I would really really appreciate your support. And click on the Amazon links for the Veneto set. Uh, also the wine Bible. I was going to mention the wine Bible, which I really, really highly recommend the wine Bible by Karen McNeil. It's a thousand eight pages of everything about wine. I mean, she, she has pretty much everything on wine in that, in that book. And there is a paperback version. There's also a Kindle version. 
The paperback version, I don't remember how much it cost to be honest, because I didn't buy, I didn't get the paperback version. I've got the Kindle version. I've got the Kindle version right here on my Kindle. Um, the Kindle version is actually, last time I checked, it was actually free if you're an Amazon Prime member. And I'm an Amazon Prime member, so I got it for free. And uh, it's it's a great book. I'm still going through it. I haven't. I'm still trying to make a dent in this thing. It's a thousand eight pages long, and um, but it has just about everything about wine that you can think of. It's very very good. From what I've seen so far, what I've read so far, it's a really really good book. If you're interested in that, you can go to drinkwithrick.com, click on the link, and purchase your own copy of the wine bible by karen mcneil <clears throat> or you can if you if you're an amazon prime member get the kindle version for free i won't make anything off of it but that, that's cool it's as long as you're um if, if you like wine as long as you're learning about wine if you want to read it about wine that's fine that's that's good all right no pressure there it's, it's all good and um And that's the Wine Bible. I think we're going to pretty much close up here soon, in a few minutes. I'm starting to feel this. I'll tell you what, I've got to have a little bit more of this filet mignon. Even though it does not pair well, it does not pair well with this one, okay? Don't try it. Don't try this at home. Um, I love steak. So I have to have a little bit more of that. Because I can't throw that out. No way. This wine, I think I'm going to have to cork this wine soon because um, I think I'm pretty far down the bottle. Those who want to see me drink the whole bottle. <clears throat> yeah, I got a little bit farther down the bottle than I wanted to, than I planned to, but uh, it was just, it, it, I tell you what, this wine is really easy to drink. I'm really surprised. I'm surprised and I'm somewhat impressed. This wine, I didn't really expect, I didn't know what to expect from this wine, but I didn't expect a whole lot. It's it's $10, for, once again, this is the Mon, uh, Monferrato Dolcetto. And uh, it's a 2017 uh, from Canteen Povero. I really, uh, I'm really impressed with this wine because um, for ten dollars a bottle, I expected something. I really, to be honest, I expected something more in line with the cab that I had here. That that was the um, collection that we tried. This was actually the very first wine. This is what started the wine stream. This started the wine stream. It was the collection. It was a wine from Target, and it was actually a Target brand wine. This Target got into the premium or quote premium wine business. They they were already doing uh, uh, some wines that were there, like their budget wines, or like four or five dollar bottle of wines. Uh, and I have not tried those. Maybe one day we'll try one of those and see how those work out. But um, but I tried this just on a lark and I said well I'll, I'll, I'll stream this I'll, I'll do this and I'll, I'll do a stream uh, trying the wine out because there are a lot of people that were were interested in seeing what this wine was about a Target wine Target branded wine and it actually turned out to be okay I mean it was not it was definitely not a wine like this it was, um, it was certainly not a wine like, the, like say, like the Tesla or the, or the uh, Domaine de Genasse or something like that, or even the Frico wine. It was, it was, um, it was okay. It was okay with burgers, but um, that's what started the wine stream in the first place. And you can go back and watch it. It's fine. It's, it's really rough. <laughs> I mean, uh, of course, I've, I've, um, I can't say how far we've come in twenty of these wine streams. This is the twentieth wine stream, but uh, this that was very, very rough. 
because it was the first time I, I it was the first time I'd ever done the wine stream, and it was just something I was doing for fun, and I'm still doing this for fun. That's all I'm doing for. This is just basically fun. Although you know what, if if I can get a sponsor or something, that's okay. I'm I'm good with that. But this is really just supposed to be um, just for fun. And I I hope you have fun watching it. Um, you know, if, even if you're making fun of me, that's okay. As long as you're having fun. But that's what started it, the collection. And since then, we have done, you see all those bottles of wine in the back. Uh, well, there's one, there is one bottle missing. That would be the Finca Museum. Now, I do have the box for it, but uh, I no longer have the bottle, the empty bottle. But all along here, you can see the bottles of wine that we have actually tried. All of these on the top tier are the wines that we have actually tried on the wine stream. That I've opened up, uh, tasted, uh, have drunk them, and uh, reviewed them on the wine stream. 20 bottles or, or this is going to be this is the 20th bottle actually and this there are 19 bottles that uh, this is going to be the 20th to go up there with this 20th episode uh, we're going to reach uh, with the 20 beginning with the 21st episode we're going to reach another milestone and we're going to um, up the game a little bit we're going to up the ante a little bit and I'm not going to tell you what it is right now but we're going to um, next week you'll have to tune in next week to see it to to be a part of it but um, this is the 20th uh, wine stream and then uh, the 21st wine stream it's going to change the game a little bit we're gonna have a, a, a few different things going on it'll be much the same as this uh, to be honest I mean nothing drastic but and, and in fact if you watch the first wine stream going up the line to this one, you will have noticed the uh, transition, the slow transition to where we are now from where we began. Where we began was something very, very basic. Um, and now we've become, uh, th this has become a little bit more involved, a little more, uh, a little flashier, a little bit more uh, sophisticated. I, I don't know, sophisticated. sophisticated. I can't even say the word. Look at this. I've had too much of this. <laughs> I'm really having a great time doing this. And I'm glad that you are, uh, those of you who are here watching this, are uh, part of it with me. And I'm going to continue doing this as long as it's fun to do. When it's no longer fun, I'm going to stop. But for right now, it, I'm having a great time. Excuse me, uh, this wine. I'm having a great time, and uh, I'm going to continue to do this. And uh, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it takes us. Maybe it won't go anywhere. Then again, who knows? Maybe in a year or so, that we'll be still be doing this, and we'll be looking back at these first episodes, and we'll think, oh, uh -huh, wow, that's how it all started. So... In any case, one of the things that I'm, I'm planning to do is um, to do something special, if we get that far, because it's, it's still two months away, is to do something special for uh, National Podcast Day. National Podcast Day is the last, uh, it's, it's, I think it's uh, September 30th, and uh, last Monday of, of, um, of the month. And uh, I'm going to do a special, I, I, I'm teasing it right now, okay? Uh, and, but we're going to do a special event for National Podcast Day. And as you know, I've been a longtime podcaster. I've been podcasting for over 13 years. And uh, I participate in a lot of these things. Um, we have podcast movement coming up in Orlando in August. And I can't make that one because we already did uh, uh, podcast, PodFest 
uh, back in March in Orlando also. Uh, we couldn't make it this year, but we're going to... Uh, we're going to, for National Podcast Day, which is com- coming up in uh, September 30th. We're going to do something very special. I've got some things planning. It should be should be a lot of fun for everybody. And Tim, by the way, Tim's joined us in the chat. Tim, it's great to see you. I want to say it's it's great to see you in the chat. Um, I uh, uh, hope you're having a good uh, weekend and that you're drinking right along with me. And to be honest, look, I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but I am. I told myself I wouldn't go farther down than half the bottle, but I, as you can see, I don't know if you can see in these lights, in the studio lights, but I am um, two-thirds of the way down this bottle. Yeah, two-thirds of the way down the bottle. This, I tell you what, we're drinking the Monferrato Dolcetto. It's an Italian wine. These are from Dol, Dol, uh, Dolcetto grapes, and from Italy. And this has been such an easy wine to drink. I didn't realize that I got that far down the bottle until just now, uh, when Tim showed up. <laughs> Tim says hi, Rick. Uh, hi, Tim. You know, I tell you what, Tim, it's great to see you. Uh, Tim has. Uh, I worked with Tim in at WFL uh, years ago. I have a lot of stories. I, I think I've already uh, uh, told you a few of the stories from, from my early days at, at WFL at Channel 35 in Orlando. And um, some of the best days, I'll have to say that that, uh, that was just one of the best times of my life was working at Channel 35 and working with so many awesome people. Tim was one of them. They were... Uh, it was just, it was really more family than anything else, still family, um, and I miss, uh, I miss Tim, and I miss all these guys there at, at Channel 35, just, just an awesome, awesome crew, and um, I, I will, I want to say that I am honored, I am, I will be, always be honored to be, to have been part of that that uh, that crew at Channel Thirty Five. It was it was just just a great it was just a great time, and uh, a great people. Anyway, uh, what were where was I? <laughs> Lost the train of thought. Like I said, this is a stream of consciousness show, so that's what we do here. Uh, Monferrato Dolcetto, twenty seventeen, um, and these grapes uh, from Italy. This is. It's surprising. I I was surprised with this. I, I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, I I purchased this at Wine Store in Blakeney, North Carolina, and uh, I do frequent the wine store there. Trish um, actually recommended this wine. She actually said this was actually a pretty good wine to try. That was uh, under the ten dollar mark. And it, I'll have to say that Trish, you made a great call on that. And, and the the ladies at the wine store. Always seem to to uh, to do that. They know their wines for one thing, and they always take really good t- care of me. I mean, every time I go in there, I usually go in there Thursdays, and they do their their Thursday tastings, which is a lot of fun. And um, they're they're just 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 great people. They really are. And um, uh, I want to say that this was actually a good choice because I, I I saw it on the shelf. This was not one of the wines that I tasted. I tasted some other wines that I really would like to try, but they were a little pricier for what I uh, usually like to throw up on the wine stream. And um, throw up's not a good word, is it? <laughs> Put up on the wine stream. <laughs> Didn't mean that way. Um, but Trish um, and, and, and the ladies there, they, they uh, rec- I, I saw this sitting on the shelf, and I said, what about this? And she says, oh, this is actually a pretty good Italian wine. You should try it. So I did. I purchased a bottle. It was, I think I paid eight ninety nine for it. It, it. This this goes consider now. Unlike a lot of the the wines there at the wine store, which sell for about between thirty percent and half off uh, what you would normally get. Like some of these, like the Domaine uh, de Genasse and and some of those other wines. Those those were like that was like a. 
forty dollar bottle of wine, and I picked it up for about half of that. This one was pretty much in line for what they're selling for online. Yeah, Tim says Tim says that was that was television was fun. Absolutely, Tim. Absolutely. I I tell you what, that was not really a job. That was just uh, that was really uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, and I, you know, I went there every day. I looked forward to going there to Channel 35 every day, um, j just because I looked forward to the people I worked with, to um, to whatever was going to to. I mean, there were yeah, yeah, there were always like tense days. There were always like uh, days when there was a lot going on and 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 things like that. But but it was always. It was always fun. It was. I don't think there was ever really a bad day there. It was just, just. It was just a great experience all the way around. Yeah, thank you, Tim. And, and uh, you know, where was I going with this? Oh, <laughs> I was going to say that that uh, I tried this wine. Ten dollars a bottle is pretty much consistent across the board. But you can you can actually pick this up at wine. What is it? Uh, wine store dash. Uh, 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 I can't remember. <laughs> it's a wine store. Um, let me look it up real quick because I don't actually have it up on my browser. Um, wine store dash online dot com. That's what it is. And yeah, I could. I guess I have had to a little bit too much of this. Uh, Tim, I'm sure you're probably laughing at me right now, but. Um, We've had some good times there too, with uh, with some. Uh, well, anyway, I'm not going to go there right now. But <laughs> it it was uh, uh, wine store dash online dot com is where you can pick this up uh, for uh, eight ninety nine a bottle. I think is what they have it for. I think it's eight ninety nine a bottle. That's what I paid for mine. I think, uh, but it's consistently goes for about ten dollars a bottle. It really does. I've I, I've looked at on Vivino. I don't. I don't think Vivino carries it. I think uh, there are a couple of other places that do carry it. Um, but I would say that this, in my final review on this wine, I would say it is definitely a wine to try if you like Italian wines, as I do, and if you like. Uh, I, I think this works well with pasta. Uh, not with filet mignon, like I said. This this was great filet mignon. Don't get me wrong, um, but it, it uh, doesn't. I don't think it pairs as well with red meats. I think it pairs well with uh, maybe something like a chicken or a uh, chicken parmesan. I think it pairs really well with um, with pastas with tomato sauce and maybe some. Uh, uh, white meats in there. It goes well with cheese. It does. We tested that. It goes well with cheese. Now I I had a um what I have here. I I had a Monterey Jack here, but I think it would also go e well equally well with a mozzarella. I think it would probably go well with a provolone. It would go well with uh, with a, with quite a few cheeses. I think this is a good cheese wine to pair with. It's I think it would also go well with um, I don't know um, maybe an appetizer, and I think it, it it goes well on its own. This is actually a pretty good wine that that you can drink on on its own. I don't, and it's, I can say that about some wines. There are some wines that I say that, that you can drink by themselves, and then there are other wines that I say, well, you really need to pair it with something uh, because uh, you, you don't really drink want to drink that by itself, um, especially if it's something that is really, really tannic or if it's really acidic. So you want to really pair that with a, a, uh, with a, a food that fits that. Uh, type of, of wine. But overall, I really, really do recommend this wine. I, I like it. The Montferrato Dolcetto. And uh, it's a, this one's a 2017 vintage. So I think that's about it for our, our wine stream. I think we're gonna, it's time to close it up. But I want to say, I want to thank everybody who joined us this evening. Uh, I want to thank 
uh, you know, of course, my wife, she's been in the chat. I don't know if she's still awake. D, it's great to see you. Tim, it's great to see you. Um, and uh, everyone else who's joined us and everyone else is going to watch it later because I know a lot of people, I go back and later and look that uh, a lot of people watch the the uh, wine stream afterwards, after the fact. But um, I want to thank you all. You're my friends. I do appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for staying with me to to uh, drink with me. And I hope you join me next week. Next week, I'm not really sure what we're going to do. Uh, we have a couple of choices. The um, ho the Hecula. The Hecula might be a good choice. We'll see what happens. In any case, I want to thank you all for joining me tonight for this uh, wine stream. And join me next week when we can all get together on the Saturday Night Wine Stream and drink with Rick. Good night.